Item number SCP-6330 Security Level 1 Containment Class Esoteric Secondary Class Uncontained Disruption Class Dark Risk Class Notice Assigned Site Not Applicable Assigned Director Not Applicable Research Head Not Applicable Assigned Task Force MTF IOTA 12 Lucid Dreamers Special Containment Procedures Due to the nature of SCP-6330, physical containment is not currently possible. Funding should be supplied to companies encouraging the sale and purchase of baby monitor cameras and an attempt to detect and witness SCP-6330 sleepwalker events. Should reports of a sleepwalker event circulate, Mobile Task Force IOTA-12 Lucid Dreamers are tasked with investigation and suppression of public media circulation or news reports regarding SCP-6330. All civilians who view SCP-6331 or SCP-6332 instances are to be immediately administered Class A amnestics. At any time, one SCP-6331 should be held within a small item locker in the site nearest to its recovery. Can't study instance kept at Site 44. The instance should be examined weekly and any changes reported to the nearest Level 3 researcher. SCP-6331 that are affected by sleepwalker events are to be left in the possession of the family they were discovered with, as no anomalous activity has ever been recorded following an event. Note, whether or not instances remain non-anomalous is currently unknown. Families in possession of SCP-6331 should be monitored in case of further activity. Description, SCP-6330 is a phenomenon affecting stuffed animals worldwide, though it's common in teddy bears. Manifestation of this phenomenon is referred to as a sleepwalker event. Sleepwalker events occur only within the households of families with young children, typically between the ages of 1 to 14. Events begin by the manifestation of entities referred to as SCP-6332. These creatures typically blend with shadows, though this mechanism is poorly understood, and somewhat resemble creatures associated with fantasy, such as dragons or ogres and always manifest beneath a child's bed. SCP-6330 instances depict behavior indicating that they intend to hunt or prey upon the sleeping child. SCP-6331 are stuffed animals already present in the child's room. That seemed to be non-anomalous prior to SCP-6332 manifestations. SCP-6331 have been shown to instantaneously manifest small wooden weaponry in order to combat SCP-6332. Note, see document 6330-184, and assumably to protect a child. Battles have been shown to last upwards of 20 minutes and are always near silent. In all, update, most observed cases, SCP-6331 have emerged victorious. Note, usually delivering a fatal blow to the SCP-6332's upper torso, juggler, or heart via their small weapons. Though are severely wounded, they're in the skirmish. Torn wool and stuffing are common, and following all known events, SCP-6331 have died due to their injuries. Prior to death, the instances will drag the SCP-6332's corpse back under the bed frame and demanifest. It will emerge a short while later and attempt to climb the bed. The SCP-6331 will then embrace its child and pass away. Addendum 6331 Test Logs Due to SCP-6330 incidents being generally random and irregular, a total of one controlled test has taken place. The following is a log of the offense. Test 6330-40 
Location, Site 44. Date, 14th of July, 1987. Forward, the following test was conducted on the grounds of Site 44. Researcher Peep's seven-year-old daughter, henceforth referred to as subject, was placed in the humanoid containment room and was soothed to sleep using a teddy bear that researcher Peep claimed the subject had a strong emotional attachment to. This experiment was conducted a total of 13 times prior to the following sleepwalker effect. MTF Iota-12 was stationed at the room's entrance for swift intervention if needed. Begin log. Subject has entered REM sleep. No anomalous activity is observed for three hours. At 1.40 Pacific Daylight Time, an SCP-6332 is observed beneath the subject's bed. 1.40 A quiet rustling sound can be heard beneath the bed, and sounds reminiscent of a large animal's breathing are audible. A pair of large, scaly, clawed hands grasp the rim of the bed. A creature resembling a western dragon emerges. It stands approximately three meters above the ground, switching between bipedal and quadrupedal motion. 145. For five minutes, the SCP-6332 patrols the room, moving silently and methodically, unaware of the surveillance cameras. 150. SCP-6332 turns towards the subject, poising itself at the foot of the bed and stretching its arms out towards the subject. It gapes its jaws wide, exposing rows of large pointed teeth and a dark pink tongue. Its motions at this time are likened to that of a snake, and it seems to prepare to lunge at the subject. The stuffed bear stands up on the subject's chest and draws a small sword and shield from an unknown source. It positions its sword's tip points downward and has its shield at its side. SCP-6331 hunches over slightly and throws its sword. Note, despite having no visible fingers, SCP-6331 instances are able to grasp and wield the weapons masterfully, maintaining eye contact with SCP-6332. After 10 seconds, the SCP-6332 throws its jaws at the subject, and SCP-6331 responds with a leap towards the subject's attacker, slicing SCP-6332's eye. The SCP-6332 responds with a quiet grunt and touches its wound, which leaks a viscous black liquid. Note, this substance is believed to be a bodily fluid produced by SCP-6332, potentially a substitute for blood or viscera. The SCP-6331 jumps towards SCP-6332 and utilizes fabric from the bed sheets to quickly cover the wound, apparently attempting to minimize mess and evidence of its presence. 159. Both instances are in battle for 9 minutes before the first signs of damage to SCP-6331, the following disappearing of one of SCP-6332's torso spines, it strikes the SCP-6331 with a heavy slap, which sends SCP-6331 across the room. SCP-6331 stands back up, placing a hand on its stomach and looks at its hand, which is now covered in wool and stuffing. They charge at each other once again, though the subject seems to move slightly into bed. Both instances stop and quickly stare at the subject before the subject settles. The instances resume fighting. 210. After 20 minutes of battle, both instances are heavily scarred and injured. After kicking itself off of the SCP 6332's nose, SCP 6331 sprints from one side of the room towards SCP 6332, leaping into the air and landing a fatal blow, slicing the neck of the other instance, which falls lifeless to the floor. SCP-6332 is dragged by the SCP-6331 back under the bed. 2.15. A short while later, the SCP-6331 emerges, 
Damage sustained includes the loss of one buttoned eye, exposed stuffing, and torn wool. It places its sword and broken shield on the nearby table. SCP-6331 then drags itself up the bed sheet towards the subject, was sleeping peacefully throughout the test. It rests beside the child, laying motionless. It seems to glare directly at the camera, and a small wooden thumb protrudes from its round hand, giving a thumbs up to researchers. Its head flops onto the child's cheek before it ceases to move. End log. Upon conclusion of this test, MTF Iota-12 carried out heavy investigation of the bed. The SCP-6332's corpse was not discovered beneath the bed frame, though trace amounts of the aforementioned black substance was present. Samples taken revealed it to be composed of raw hemoglobin and water, though its viscous nature and other physical properties do not support the discovery. The SCP-6331 instance was removed and placed in secure storage. It has to date showing no further anomalous properties. Addendum 6332 Following a sleepwalker event taking place on July 7th, 2001, a news headline with the title, Young Boy Reported Missing from Family Home in Portland, was circulated en masse among civilians of Portland, Oregon. Upon investigators' arrival at the scene, it was discovered that the young boy's room had large trails of viscous black liquid streaking the walls. Investigators soon requested foundation intervention, at which point MTF IOTA-12 were dispatched. Testing confirmed the substance to be that commonly associated with SCP-6332, and IOTA-12 requested permission to carry out full investigation of the event. This request was approved by Overseer Command. The following file was written by MTF IOTA-12. Personally, I recommend all comments should be ignored. Director Woods. Event 131 Incident Report Report 6330-131 Overworld Disruption High Like, really bad. Summary Sleepwalker occurred on the night of 6th of July 2001. No camera footage. Witness reports or any signs of exactly what happened. Though neighbors who were awake reported hearing thumping from the room. Trails of suspected SCP-6332 visible on the walls. Child missing. Additionally, the aforementioned child stuff orca was found in the corner of the room. Well, many parts of it were all over the place, but its main body and head sat hunched over near the bed. It had an amount of the black substance on it, but its eyes were damp with water. We suspect it was an SCP-6331 instance. Additional notes. Local authorities and media companies have picked up on the case. The public are very interested in trying to figure out what caused its disappearance. We've told them that we think an animal or something came in the room. Kid put up a fight and that the substance was blood, but the child lost and was taken by it. Unfortunately, they're not very happy with that answer and people are demanding we stop lying to them. Breaking Portland Boy Found Two days after the sleepwalker event, the child was rediscovered, unconscious behind a hedge in the family's garden. A brief interview revealed that the child witnessed the final minute of the event. He claimed, my orca was fighting a big monster, and then the monster grabbed me and took me out of the window, but someone saw it. Note, this discovery indicates that SCP-6332 instances seem to fear humans. So it dropped me and I hid in a bush. A second interview revealed no other discoveries, but the child claimed the monster ate his socks. It was unknown what the SCP-6332's intentions were, had it been able to escape with the child. All involved were amnesticized and the cover story was fabricated with IOTA-12 encouraging parents in the local area to purchase video surveillance cameras. Addendum 6333 On 19th of November 2008, a call was filed to local authorities by a family in Cambridge, England. They claimed to have discovered footage of the sleepwalker event within their son's room. 
Mobile Task Force Iota-12 Lucid Dreamers were dispatched to investigate. The footage was seized by personnel and all members of the family were administered Class A amnestics. Document 6330-184 Location, Cambridge, England, within the Beep family's residence. Date, 19th of November, 2008 Forward, the following is a textual description of the offence witnessed by baby monitors. It should be noted that this is the first digital recording of a sleepwalker event outside of controlled testing. Begin log. 12.01. The child's bed sways slightly as an instance of SCP-6332 emerges. He instance resembles an unknown creature, though it is described as having a large muscular frame and stands upright. The instance walks to the opposite end of the room, hunching over and observing the child for exactly 10 minutes. 12.11 The SCP-6332 begins to stand further upright, extending an assumedly retractable set of claws. The child's teddy bear, which was placed next to the child, suddenly stands, drawing a bow and quiver. SCP-6332 assumes a quadrupedal stance and snarls before launching towards the bed. The SCP-6331 fires a single arrow towards the SCP-6332, striking the instance directly in its canine-like snout. SCP-6332 responds with a loud huff, reminiscent of that of a bow or bovine. The instance is battled for approximately 30 minutes, the longest recorded sleepwalker event to date. Both show abilities and skill sets consistent with other SCP-6331 and 2 instances. Eventually, SCP-6332 has SCP-6331 pinned to a nearby wall, seeming to strangle it. The SCP-6332 then pulls one of SCP-6331's arrows from its arms, plunging it into the one's chest. SCP-6331 shows behaviors likened to those of intense pain. SCP-6332 seems to be victorious. The SCP-6332 leans its head towards SCP-6331, seeming to whisper into the instance's right ear. Though audio recordings cannot determine exactly what was vocalized, the SCP-6330 lifts up its head, staring blankly into SCP-6332's eyes. It reaches behind its back, pulling a small, entirely wooden Glock-19 handgun. The bear points the weapon into SCP-6332's forehead and swiftly fires. The shot creates minimal noise, and the SCP-6332's body falls limp. Black viscous fluid was sprayed on the wall. The one holds SCP-6332's corpse towards the bed, noticeably limping. It drags the body by its large forearm and demanifests upon reaching the underneath of the bed. 1240. SCP-6331 returns and briefly steers around the room before turning to the child, climbs up a desk and seems to notice a piece of paper and pen. It begins to write a note which is left on the bedside desk. See Field Report, 6330-184. Heavily wounded, the one limps to the bed, falling on the child's chest with its arms stretched wide. There is no further movement. It perishes next to its child. End log. The following is a report of the investigation written by MTF Iota 12 following the case's conclusion. Event 184 Incident Report. Report 6330-184 Overall disruption low Summary Sleepwalker began at 12.01 Fight approximately 30 minutes Sleepwalker ended at 12.40 With the neutralization of the affected SCP-6331 Really made us question how many times this happened to us all as kids Additional notes SCP 6331 produced a note, only recorded instance of ones being able to understand English. Reads as follows. Hello, Timothy. Thank you for always taking care of me. It was really fun. 
I was able to repay the favor of protecting you. Unfortunately, I am hurt. I need to go. I'm too weak to stay. I just hope you'll remember me. It's been fun helping you. I've enjoyed my time under your care. Calling you to this, I knew it would happen. The sleepwalkers coming for you. I'm just happy I could do my job. Goodbye, my friend. I hope I may see you soon.